Well, good evening, folks, and welcome once again as we spend a few moments in God's Word and in the spirit of prophecy. I do want to just as a quick note let you know in case you haven't heard yet or seen it, uh, the funeral for uh, service uh, for Marion will be uh, this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Obviously, because of COVID, uh, it's not an church invited event. It will be at the church, but it will be an invite only uh, funeral. Uh, we will be putting it, I had said on Zoom, uh, and it may, it'll probably still be there, but I'm also looking at uh, the ability of getting it on YouTube because that's a much easier place for many, many people to be able to view the funeral service. Uh, so more to come on that, but on Wednesday at 2 p.m., uh, we will be having the funeral service for Marion. She will be dearly missed. Please continue to pray for her family during this time. Let's bow our heads and get into our topic for the evening. Father in heaven, Lord, I pray that you will be with us today. Lord, we just uh, still are reeling from the loss of Marion. Uh, she may have been elderly, Lord, but she was healthy, and we just, we can even see your mercy in her passing the way she has. Uh, Lord, without suffering. So we want to thank you for that, and we want to ask that each one of us will be found faithfully living for you, because we would like to be home in glory for an eternity, and presumably we will meet Mary in there, because she died in a strong belief and faith in you, and we believe she was faithfully serving you. So we look forward to the day when we can all be reunited with any of our loved ones who have uh, passed away uh, in the hope of the blessed resurrection morning. Now we pray you'll be with us as we spend a few moments in your word and listening to the pen of inspiration. And I ask that your Holy Spirit will direct our thoughts and our minds heavenward. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read from 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1 verse 3. And here's what it says. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and by virtue. All things that pertain to life and godliness through what? Through a knowledge of him who called us. A knowledge of Jesus once again. Every time we hear about salvation, the only way we obtain it is by a knowledge of Jesus Christ, by knowing him personally. To know him is to love him. To know him is to share him. To know him is to grow in your own experience. To know him is to be have life and to be able to present life to those living in death. And so you and I, because we know him. We live in life. We should have a smile on our face. We should have joy in our heart. We should be able to present a message of life and love and hope to a world that is dying because without him, all have but one outcome, and that is the second death, the death of which we do not come back from ever. So let's live this life with a smile on our face because we have the joy and the knowledge of Jesus and the hope of salvation. And let's share that with others. Yes, you may die, but you can live again because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Let's read a little. I want to read a little today. And I want to read from an old periodical, Review and Herald, February 8, 1898. Quite a few years back, but good information for you and I to live better today, to enjoy the hope of salvation, and to understand what is important for us to gain salvation and to share it with others. And it's important because listen to what the pen of inspiration says. The plan of salvation is but dimly comprehended by the Christian world. Man, as now taught by men who claim to have knowledge of the scriptures, can never know the extent of his fallen, degraded condition. But the mission of Christ will reveal the truth as it is in Jesus. Man can know the depths to which he has sunk only by holding the wondrous chain of redemption employed to draw him up. The extent of our ruin can be discerned only in the light of the law of God exhibited on the cross of Calvary. The wonderful plan of redemption must be discerned in the death of Christ. Everything relating to our salvation all comes back to Christ. 
Christ crucified, Christ risen, the life of Christ, Christ pleading with the Father and saying, not my will, but yours be done. You and I need to say the same thing each and every day, not my will, but yours be done. If we would do that, if we would live in the will of Christ, if we would let him shape our minds and our lives and send us in the direction he would have us go, we can have the assurance of salvation. The world by its own wisdom cannot acquire a correct knowledge of the true and living God. When Christ came into this world, clothing his divinity with humanity, the treatment he received from the highest authority of a nation that professed to know God made fully manifest the strength of human wisdom and reason. Their reason could not form a correct idea of God through his way and his works. Did you hear that? Our brightest minds, our brightest intellects studying still cannot comprehend what is needed to understand the plan of salvation. It's best to study Jesus, to know and understand him so completely that Christ is in us, as I say almost every worship, and that is my hope of glory. Only through faith in Christ is it possible for man to live the law. Man is not able to save himself, but the Son of God fights his battles for him and places him on a vantage ground by giving him his divine attributes. And as man accepts the righteousness of Christ, he is a partaker of the divine nature. He may keep the commandments of God and live. Peter says this, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Truth as it is in Jesus is obedience to every precept of Jehovah. It is heart work, the Bible sanctification, and it didn't say it is hard work, it said it is heart work. It is a changing of the heart. It is a reprogramming of the mind as Christ sanctifies us. As we behold him, we become more like him. The things of the world grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So how is it we become like him? That's right, brothers and sisters. We take this Bible, we blow the dust off the cover, and we read it. We fall in love with him. We fall in love with his word. And slowly, ever so slowly, we become more and more like him. Ever changed, as the Bible says, from glory to glory. But I take comfort in understanding that as Sister White says, all the way along the process, as long as we are moving closer and closer to him, we are perfect throughout the journey. Only as we are hid in Christ, only as we are clothing ourselves in his righteousness every day. I pray that every morning you're getting up, you're getting on your knees, you're begging the Lord for forgiveness, you're asking him to give you strength to get through the day, you're studying his word, you're studying to show yourself approved, you're hiding yourself in the righteousness of Christ. So when the Father looks upon you and I, he sees the merits of the righteousness of Christ. And the power of the Spirit dwells in us and lives in us and through us. And then we can go out and call a world to live better today than they did yesterday. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that you will fit each one of us for your kingdom. And in so doing, we will call others to live for your kingdom as well, to call others as well to live. And it will just continue to trickle down. Lord, we desire to see each and every one in our sphere of influence in your kingdom. We desire that the testimony of our life will not drive people away from you, but draw them in closer to you. So Lord, we pray that you will take the mess that is each one of our lives and that through the purity of your son and his robes, we can be made righteous. Lord, reveal to us all of our flaws and the sinfulness of the sin that we still have in us so that we will learn to live for you each and every day. Lord, help us with the power of your spirit to be a people who can call others to live for you, to call others out of confusion, out of Babylon into the glorious light of the truth as it is found in Christ Jesus. Lord, I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, folks, blessings. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you again tomorrow night.